everybody, welcome back. We are getting super close to our top 10 of our favorite 50 games, but first we have to do 20 to 11. So again, we're jumping right into it. Lewis, what's your number 20? We're almost there, aren't I we? I know, All it's right. exciting. Woo! My number 20 is a game by Uva Rosenberg called Caverna, the mm. Cave Farmers. So uh, Caverna is a... Uh, pretty complex uh, game where you put down workers and try to develop your cave and, and you raise animals and so forth. It's based a lot on the Agricola uh, system that was so popular. I think for me Caverna is just slightly better than Agricola. I like it a little bit more. You can develop your dwarf into a bit of a warrior and so forth and I think that's kind of cool getting your guys up a level. But Caverna for me, number 20. Nice. That's a really strong pick. Um, Caverna didn't necessarily cross my radar when I was looking at my top 50, but it's a game that I would play. And again, there were plenty of games on here that are great that kind of just <laughs> were 50 to 100. Um, I think that's great to hear. Yeah. So yeah, it's a really solid game. What's your number 20? My number 20 is a game that I, <laughs> I adore. <laughs> Um, you won't be surprised. I know that Winter Circle made your list, but for me, my favorite horse racing game is Long Shot. It is. And so number 20 pick is Long Shot. Um, I think there's just something about the super horse racing theme because the cards are so horse racy and you feel like you're at the track mm -hmm. and it's just you're like lucky number it's not lucky number it's lucky number and you have to throw the card down and yell it when someone rolls the dice that matches that particular horse number the horse's names are just classic and in long shot you're playing one continuous long game and it's just like the horses are racing around the whole time and it's just like that's the game it's not long. It's it's like an hour to an hour an and hour. a half. I don't know. It's great. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. That is your favorite horse <laughs> racing game. My number 19 is a Martin Wallace game called Age of Industry. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, this game is an interesting kind of version where... Uh, we don't play it very often and I really want to. It's one of these games that gets under my skin and I'm like, oh, I want to play this. But... Basically, you're building up little uh, buildings, and then you're shipping goods, and you're flipping the buildings over for victory points. It's just okay. putting tracks okay. on. Any of that ring of bell? It does. Yeah. It's a very light, tinny bell in the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a very heavy game, and there's yeah. a heavier version. Um, but this is the one that I think is easiest to get on the table, which clearly I haven't done in a few years. Maybe we'll, no, we'll get we it should. out sometime. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a great Martin Wallace game. Good nice. design. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what's yeah. your what's your number nineteen? My my number nineteen is uh, a card sleeving game, and it was the first one I mm. played of its kind. Uh, Mystic Veil vale really took me by surprise. The very first time I played it was at a convention. We were at a booth. And uh, Lewis and a couple of our friends sat down with this 14-year-old boy. He was a stranger. And he proceeded to completely wipe the floor with us. He destroyed and us. And it was devastating for my very first experience of Mystic Bale to see just how awesome someone can do and how bad you feel when you don't do that well. But after that first experience, we played it again. We got it. And to me, it just took me a minute to kind of figure out how it worked. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of of sleeving and making all of those choices about what kind of card do you want to build and then there's a press your luck with pulling out new cards and then seeing how much you can get without going over and it's just really really cool now so many ways to get victory points as well um i think the game is clever and fun and really cool it's very very neat putting your cards together and Kim has figured out how to play like that 14 year old boy because when we play games she crushes me. You crush me every time by dozens of points. It's not even close. Sometimes, most yeah. times. Sometimes. Most times. Yeah, it's a good game though. Solid game. My number 18 is a game that might show up later on your list. It's called Castles of Burgundy by Stefan Feld. I uh, really like this game. It's a solid game. It's one of his best. Um, 
And I know that you're always ready to play. <laughs> <laughs> Castles of Burgundy, you're building out a little uh, area, putting castles and other area, uh, you know, other type of lands down, trying to get um, points for various things. It's one of those point salad games where you can get points in a number of different ways. Yeah. Um, you roll dice and assign them to different things and do different actions. Yeah. Really cool game, worth all the praise that it gets. It gets a lot of praise and it, it deserves it. Yeah, I, I like the, the dice rolling is a huge factor in the game, but you don't necessarily always want to get high numbers. Uh, so it, it made it to where whatever you roll, there's something you can do with mm. those dice. Yeah. And to me, that was the first time I'd seen that in a game. And I really, really like that. Yeah. Yeah, you will yeah. see that later. <laughs> I can't, I can't hide it. <laughs> so what number are we on? I'm 18? sorry. Yes, you're number 18. All right, so my number 18 is a game that I think I love more than anyone else, and I don't know why, but I do, and it's fine. I love Kanagawa. I love Kanagawa a lot. Like, I, I, wa I want to play it. I to me, it's got this same or similar charm that I like about Tokaido, but it's more of a strategy game, and I really like how you are going for particular kinds of things like flowers or trees or animals and you're 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 getting these cards and activating them um, in a variety of ways you can you can use cards in two different ways and then you create this long line where you have seasons at the top and if you have these matching season symbols then you're going to get more victory points for continuous rows and I don't know it's just it's great. I think it's just a really great game, and I love the way you draft those cards um, because some are face up and some are face down, and yeah. you don't know always what you're going to get or what your opponents are going to get or what they're going to go for ahead of time. It's just a clever game. It's that's, beautiful. That's a game that not doesn't really get talked about. Not a lot of people seem to even remember it, but it's a good game, and you love it. <laughs> I do, I do, I love it. It's right making my top 20, you know? Yeah, something people should look into. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that it's kind of been ignored. My number 17 is a flicking game called Catacombs. Yeah. Now, in Catacombs, uh, one person will take on the role of the monsters, the, the dungeon monsters, and the other players will play heroes going through this dungeon. And at different levels, you'll set up a room, and you'll put down your little uh, discs, monster discs or hero discs and then you flick them at each other um, on your turn and if you hit that's a point mm -hmm. of damage and monsters have different skills and heroes have different talents and magic items so maybe you shoot a bow and arrow and you'll have a little arrow and disc even smaller that, disc that you can flick and that <laughs> that way you don't have to go get into the center of battle or maybe somebody has a, like a poison spider flicks and hits you and now you're character is taking damage from poison and it's just a lot of fun it's a quick way to have a you know a D, D dungeon night in like three hours and it all comes down to your flicking skills and your coordination and i've just had a lot of fun with catacombs i have too and i think only one time when we've played have i made it all the way to the end with my um with my other game players, Lewis usually runs uh, as the monsters, and we got to the end and defeated mm -hmm. the final monster, and that was like the most exciting experience it's ever. Epic, so yeah. I I love it, and I love flicking, and I know the better the more you play, the better you get with flicking, and so it can be really fun when you have super great flicks. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. exciting. I love it. Um, so my. 17 is a game, again, that I seem to love, and no one else seems to be as charmed with it as I am. I love Oregon. I love Oregon so much, and it's kind of straightforward and, and, yeah. and simple, but there's something about the grid and playing your cards. So if you get a covered wagon, and then you get... Um, Jeez, another, any other symbol, the fire, yeah, like the fire. yeah, or the eagle or something. You you can figure out: Do I want to go down from top over? Do I want to go over this way and then come down in a different row? And then you can put your um, people or a building if you place a building card with one of those other symbol cards. 
down onto the map and there's like this map out in the front in the middle with the grid and so you're playing these to get a varying amount of victory points collections of your meeples give you three meeples gives you five points for that too i don't know it's simple it's straightforward i love it i love going mining at the silver or the gold mines uh and just flipping over a random disc and going hope i get the five <laughs> Um, but I think Oregon is a great game. Really cool game. It's been out for a long time. Yeah. I, I mean, I assume you can still get it, but it, yeah, probably. it's an oldie but a goodie. You can play it on Yukata too. That's true. My number 16 is one you've already mentioned, Antique. It's a Rondell yeah. game uh, with combat. This one just clicks for me. There's a number of those Rondell games that are yeah. all kind of the same mechanism. And this one is a war one, which I tend to shy away from sometimes but boy i i have fun with this one it makes sense it's just a cool game it's a really cool game i totally agree yeah yeah i have fun with it my uh 16 is a, a game about art and stained glass which is strange because i you know i already picked stained glass of centro mm. with azul so that must be that <laughs> my pick is sagrada i like Sagrada a lot. I think Lewis was actually enamored with Sagrada much faster than mm. I was and only in multiple plays and with some of the expansions have I like really enjoyed it. I think it's a great game. There's dice rolling but then there's selection in turn order, much like uh, Catan drafting in the beginning. One player goes around, then that player at the end picks again before it comes back around to you. So first player gets the last pick, but there's still two dice to pick from. And you're placing those dice into this grid that you have in front of you that has probably requirements of pips or colors, and you can't place the same color or number uh, orthogonally to each other. It's it's a wonderful abstract game mm -hmm. that again just has captured me in this way that I find so surprising. Yeah, Sagrada is really good. I, we first saw it at the Board Game Geek convention a few years ago before it was released. They were Kickstarter uh, showing it. Yeah, you know, they're like, hey, we're doing a Kickstarter. Yeah. Check us out. And I, Kim said, let's go look at it. It's got a cool stained glass. And I was like, <laughs> boring. But I went with her, and boy, it took about three minutes of playing. For me to say this game's great yeah it's great it's a really good abstract but just a ton of fun and really smart yeah great so my number 15 game is a newer game oh so uh kimberly and i have been spending our last couple weeks playing a game called sleeping gods and uh this is an adventure game where you play cooperatively is the crew of a ship in the mysterious fantasy land and you're trying to get home by waking up the sleeping gods you go to a different place and you take this book out and you flip it's like, heavy it's very heavy it's like a choose your own <laughs> adventure type thing where you flip to a number and you read the entry and then you interact with what's happening there and the story has just been massive yeah we've played for probably eight to ten hours so far Oh, just that? I was thinking Maybe more, more like, yeah, 15. And, and I feel like we've barely touched the map, you know? We've gone to a few of the places, but when you look at the full map, there's just so much to do, and it's really been fun. And you're playing together as yeah. a team, and you can do things to help out on other people's turns, essentially. Yeah. And combat is all together. It is just a fun adventure, and we've done very little of the existing content of the game, and we're nearing the end of our first, first adventure, yeah. you know? And I am really enjoying it, too. And normally I would hesitate to put a brand new game on a list like this, but I feel like I've put as many hours into this as many other games in my collection, you know? Just yeah. playing this one campaign through has really felt like... It's, it's almost like role-playing without a dungeon master or game master, you know? So we're at 15? We are. Yeah? Yep. So my 15 is Memoir 44. Mm. Memoir 44, I, I, I think at this point on, maybe my top 15 is just going to be me saying this is a perfect game of that particular style. Right. Um, and and I, it's hard for me to, to say anything other than that. I think the plethora of all of the different 
battles that are based off of World War II and the, the different setups for each side, um, the opposing sides, the Allies and the Axis, is so fascinating and to me really works the strategy in my brain. I enjoyed setting up, I have my cards and yes, the cards you draw, you don't know what you're going to get, but you get to choose from the cards that you have and the amount that you have too, which varies every time. But you've got your troops and you see what's going on, you can see the battlefield and then you also, you just, I don't know, there's something to it that just clicks and I enjoy it. I think it's just such a dynamic game and you can play so many different battles, different games yeah. of the game that you play and it's great. Love Memoir 44. We may hear more about that later. My number 14, The Quacks of Quedlinburg. Mm. Um, this is this is the game where you are brewing a potion and you build this little bag of tokens and you pull them out and you add them to your potion and you try not to explode your potion. I should say that we went ahead and got the the nice pieces. You can get them from Board Game Geek's uh, store. Yeah. When you pull out those nice pieces from your bag, it's so nice yeah. when you mix them up. It's a great experience. You it, should get it if you really it like costs, the game. The, the expansion pieces cost as much as the game itself, so it is yeah. an investment. But I love this game. It's a push your luck game. You're pulling things out. You buy new ingredients for your bag yeah. so that next time you maybe can go a little bit further on your on your potion, push your luck a little bit harder. I always have fun. I always am so sure that I finally got it figured out and I <laughs> always lose and I don't care. This is a great experience yeah. throughout and winning or losing almost doesn't matter because you have so much fun while playing. You do have a good time, and it is frustrating when you bust, but the great thing about the game that I think kind of saves it from being so frustrating is that you get one of the two bonuses if you bust. Right. If you don't bust, you get both of the bonuses, which is to move your marker on the victory point track, but also buy uh, new ingredients. Mm -hmm. And so I think that totally salvages any of those raw feelings from face to face as you <laughs> drew the draw Absolutely, phase. absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the few times I've played a game where pushing your luck and busting, you don't feel just devastated. You're yeah. like, oh, it stinks, but I can still- Yeah, I can still do things. Do things. Yeah, absolutely. All right. My 14 is, Gloomhaven. Haha! <laughs> Were you surprised? Yeah. Really? So my Maybe. my pick is Gloomhaven, and it's not Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. I'm picking Gloomhaven. I think that the big box Gloomhaven taking forever to set it up and going through character after character, playing with different dynamics, going on giant adventures, even though you can't get to all 100 plus adventures. Um, for me, I, I just thought that the game was endlessly fun and, and yeah. wonderful. And I we, we went through so many different characters together and it was just you and me. And I think that that was a huge determining factor on me enjoying the game itself was when we just decided you and I we're just going to play it together we're not going to play it with anyone else because it was so hard to set up we would leave it on the table for you know as long as we wanted to until we wanted to play something else and we would just come back and it would all be set up and ready to go so for me Gloomhaven the original I'm, I'm looking forward to Frosthaven so Frosthaven. bad but Gloomhaven easily makes my top of the top it certainly made this last summer when we were dealing with COVID and were yeah. stuck in the house, it made every day we played a new level of Gloomhaven. And yeah. so it took like two months of our lives. And, and we played we just so much. And I have to say, Isaac Childress has designed a system that is fun to keep playing. Yes. Like over and over again, we had fun with yeah. it. So great, great call on Gloomhaven. My number 13 is what I consider to be one of the uh, best racing designs out there, Downforce. Yeah. I love Downforce. I think it's yeah. uh, great that you get to look at your cards, bid for your car. You can bid as much as you want or as little as you want based on your, your card. You want to try and keep those bids down so that you make more, yeah. you have more money at the end. Yeah. And then I really enjoy a game where you can try and situate yourself where even when the other person is playing, they kind of have to move your cards because it's of the so way. It's so hard to do though. It's hard to do, but if you do it and you pull it off, it's really fun. 
And again, I've had cars that were well in last place and still done pretty well because of bets that were made throughout the game. So I think it does a great job of making you feel like you're in the game even when your car maybe isn't in the game. That's really nice. Yeah. So downforce for me is a thumbs up. Down, downforce thumbs up to me too. Okay. <laughs> so 13 for 13. me is um, Trajan. Love some Stefan Feld. You love Stefan Feld. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And I think this is great because what you've got here is a Moncala. And I think this is probably the best um, example of Moncala around. So uh, we do love rondelles. We do love Moncalas. <laughs> Maybe we just like round things. Circles. <laughs> Circles. For me, it's, it's, it's kind of along the lines of my favorite kind of heavier strategy games. I like having so many options and choices. And I have to just... I have to select those things that I want to do, and I have to say if I want to do this, then I can't do that, and I can't do that. And for me, Trey John is just a really cool game, and you have all of your stuff in front of you, so you're playing with yourself in your own Moncala. Yeah. So it's it's a really good game. Yeah, you do like Stefan Feld a lot. Because I think I did uh, Castles of Burgundy was number eighteen, and that's probably his best game. So. She likes them better than I do. That's He's great. Don't get me wrong. My number 12 is one that Kim's already said, Coloretto. It's a card game where um, you put out cards. When it's your turn, you put it into one of the piles or you take one of the piles. And so you're always trying to sabotage piles and make them good for you. And I think it's really cool how the scoring mechanism works where the first three groups, three colors that you collect are positive points and everything after that is negative points and just trying to figure out how to balance all that. Easy to learn, fun to play, quick game. And always come, you want to come back to it. You want to play it yeah, again. I do, that's true. Um, so yeah, and it's Good great. Choice. Our Colorado is very used. We, we have, probably should. I think we've bought a few copies because yeah. our first copy has been just shredded from how much we played But the new one has a different it. design on it and I like the old design. <laughs> I know. Right, so my 12 is a card game called Xenon Profiteer. Mm. Xenon Profiteer is just a stellar game. It is so cool the way it works, where you have your hand uh, of cards and you are trying to distill everything out to get to the Xenon, but you have to go in order and you have to, and those other cards, like the oxygen and the nitrogen, those are going to just clog up your deck, essentially. But you start collecting cards um, as you're, you're, you're deck building. And you collect these cards that allow you to do more on your turn to get rid of those other cards before you get the chance to play your Xenon. And once you play that, then those allow you to purchase victory point cards. It's neat. It's super neat. I don't know. I, I, I think it's just clean and clever and it's got the strangest theme, but I think it's just the game mechanics that are just so strong for me. Xenon Profiteer is one of the great deck building games out there that nobody seems to talk about. I remember when it was on sale, they had a whole display for like $10 a box. Oh they couldn't God. give them away. And I think we so bought like sad. two or three and Just gave them to, to friends. Just give them to people because it's so it's good. It's so good. I don't think it's easy to get anymore. It's not easy. word has gotten out yeah. that Xenon Profiteer is fantastic. Yeah. It's just one of those games that at the time it slipped under the radar. But boy, it's I for a deck builder, I love it. It, in fact, was my number 51 game. No! Yeah, it was my number 51. Oh, I felt really I can't terrible. I believe it didn't make your list. It made it so high on my list. I love Xenon Profiteer, but it, yeah. it just got pushed off, and I hate oh, that. Oh, boy. All right, so my last one for tonight's list, number 11, is a flicking game again. I said Catacombs earlier. This is the greatest flicking game of all time. I have a beautiful board. It's called Crokinole. <laughs> You can watch Kimberly uh, has on her channel. I think Barb teaches yeah. how to play Crokinole. Yeah. And if you don't know about this game, go watch her Barb Crokinole video. It's 
It will show you just all what All real shots by me, yeah, even though I'm yeah. playing Bart. Oh, I and love Crokinole so much. <laughs> it's great as a two-player game. It's great as a four-player game. It's, you know, you're flicking, you're trying to get it, your Crokinole pieces into the center. Sometimes you're trying to flick other people's out of the way. There are bumpers that stop There's you bumpers. from doing what you want to do. Love the game. We we yeah. first were introduced to it at a... Uh, Geekway to the West. Geekway to the West tournament. Yes. Um, the guys running it came up and said, hey, do you want to be part of the Crokinole competition? And we said, we don't know what this game is. And so they quickly taught us the rules and we played. And I Until think like we, two in the morning. We played till two in the morning. We had the best time and I love it. And if you can get a really nice Crokinole board, it'll cost you a couple, $300. But I love my Crokinole board and I'll keep it out and displayed forever yeah. because it's just the best. Crokinole is a wonderful pick and it's a super great game. It's easily replayable and it's fun. Like you say, two or four players. Teams is fun because you have someone else there across the table like helping you out, which is great. Mm -hmm. But I, I like it too. It. I think it's a great game. And what's your number 11? My number 11 is a game that I said in previous uh, videos I was surprised they didn't make Lewis's list at a higher position. I put Eclipse as my number 11 pick. And maybe because I like to fight so much more than Lewis. <laughs> Eclipse is so good though. Eclipse is phenomenal. And the new edition that just came out is the edition you should get. Um, it's really pretty. It's so wonderful. I do love the exploration. I love working on technology. Um, the, the movement with um, your, your ships and fighting and I love how everyone's ships do different things if you play with uh, the alien factions where you have a different starting hand, mm -hmm. a different starting all the stuff. It's just a great game and like Lewis said, eight rounds and it's done and you, you feel satisfied and you feel like it came to an end at just the right time. I, I, I do really, really enjoy Eclipse. It's great. Maybe if I was better at fighting, I'd have put it higher. I, I think it does everything very well, though. So it's great exciting. choice. Good choice yeah. on Eclipse. I love it. All right. So we just wrapped up 20 to 11. I am really, really excited to see Lewis's top 10 and to share there. my top 10 with him, even though he's already guessed maybe one or two that, <laughs> that are going to show up um, just based on things that we've liked over the years and we know about. Um, so don't forget to join us for that final video. It's going to be our top 10 of our favorite 50 board games. Okay, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Top 50!